fan of symmetry? Because your eyes are lopsided. And by eyes, I mean breasts. Send me your resume. This woman is dying. Never mind. She has a lump in her arm. Does that mean you're wrong? Well, no, after the biopsy. Your partner is dying. Oh wait, maybe she's not. There's a lump here. Do you think you could have checked that before referring her to the Grim Reaper? Well, my team could have, but he was too busy in the closet with his floor buffer. Oh, house. Very excited to be reacting to House MD season four, episode one, Alone. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 house videos, and this will be episode 83. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before house does as a doctor working in London. Go without me. You love Star Wars. I was just trying to be supportive. Fine, I'll go alone. I'm sorry. Did you just feel something? Oh, 911. 26-year-old <laughs> female, gas main exploded under her building. She was pulled out of the rubble after six hours. The fever is holding at 104, fluctuating consciousness. Can't take the case. I don't have a team. So hire a team. I don't have a case. Yes, House, getting some specialties to accept a patient is more difficult than getting into Harvard. Seems like House's diagnostic medicine department is just one of them. That being said though, UK hospitals are under massive pressure at the moment and need some way to relieve all the backlog. What better way to do that than just reject a referral so they can be taken off the list and then have to get another appointment to remake the same referral. There's one children's mental health service near me that needs families to fill in a form after we send a referral. Sometimes these get misplaced or sent to the wrong address. If that happens and the patient gets taken off their list after six weeks and the poor child is left without specialist treatment. In the US, the devil by another name is health insurers rejecting millions of claims every year, with some insurers rejecting more than one in three. That means when you get back from the hospital, you open a bill that says your treatment was not medically necessary. Now you're left with thousands of lost insurance premiums and tens of thousands of hospital bills. Many of these companies don't even have a human review the claim as AI algorithms deny claim without opening patient files. Almost none of these claims are appealed even though every company signs up to an independent review process. That leads to people accumulating medical debt and needing to take out extreme measures to pay it which can put them in even more debt when it could have never been needed in the first place. Finances probably aren't top of mind though when you've been under a building for the last six hours. So we know the patient has a high fever which isn't responding to antibiotics. There are still way too many possibilities there to run a differential, so let's get more clues. You've spent the last two weeks doing absolutely nothing. Concert is over. I diagnose her alone. By the end of the day, you go away for a week. Done. Go. You talking to me? Yes. Imagine that the roof of the storage closet collapses on your favorite floor buffer. Maybe the electrical works got banged up in there from stuff falling on it. Brain damage leading to hypothalamic dysregulation. Or maybe lupus. Or oh, maybe lupus. Or oh, maybe lupus. This is when we realize that the janitor has a better diagnostic sense than House's entire ex-team. That'd be hilarious as the whole point of this episode is that House needs to get the diagnosis on his own and I don't think it counts if his janitor cracks the case for him. We do know it's never lupus, but what if this time it actually is? Lupus is a very interesting condition where there are mutations in the natural regulatory systems of the immune cells. You see, cells have a self-kill switch which allows them to sacrifice themselves when they start accumulating damage or mutations. In lupus, the self-destruct button on the immune cells are switched off. So these mutant cells that are basically the body's machine guns start pointing at their own team like a 12-year-old playing Call of Duty with friendly fire on. Lupus has to be my first diagnostic essay just for the story. Grandma has lupus. Infection fits best, which leads to the worst part of the job, dealing with a floor buffer's family. We're gonna make her all better. Show off. You ought to be nicer to people. I'm not breaking into somebody's house. Where's the restaurant? Oops. She had a secret diary. Starting to turn the corner. Aren't there pills that do that? Dialysis will filter her blood. Listen carefully and no one will get hurt. Any attempt to contact the FBI? 
What do you want? To see you interview five to seven well-qualified fellowship candidates. Were you on MAO inhibitors? The antidepressant. I love how House said he was going to do this alone. I diagnosed her alone. But the janitor's wearing a stethoscope and Wilson's been unwittingly brought into this ninja operation. House is about as alone on this one as Dua Lipa when her voice kept playing through the speakers after dropping the mic. Oops. <laughs> So why is this antidepressant so significant? House said she was on a specific type of antidepressant called a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, which is very rarely used in psychiatry. The first lines tend to build up serotonin alone. The second and third lines build up serotonin and norepinephrine. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors, which are what this patient was on and what we don't use anymore, stop the removal of serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine and have a massive number of interactions. So what are they? Well, patients with these medications can't eat foods high in something called tyramine, which is an amino acid that regulates blood pressure. That includes things like aged cheese, draft beers, soy, and cured meat. Many drugs are a no-go as well, including many painkillers like tramadol, meperidine, which this patient had, or other antidepressants. When it's given with Demerol, then monoamine oxidase inhibitors can cause fatal reactions and the true mechanism isn't even fully understood. That doesn't quite explain this situation though as the patient was unwell before the explosion and having the painkiller. So question for you smart people, what percentage of the Western world are on antidepressant meds? Answers down below. Heart is beating too fast. Get the family out of here. Clear. We shocked her back into sinus rhythm but she's still tachycardic. Just give me the damn resumes. The heart's fine. Her fever's back. What's the treatment? She's not an alcoholic. I want to feel sorry for the partner that he's finding out his girlfriend was depressed, seeing a psychiatrist, taking meds, and now probably boozing as well, all while he was about as aware as a marine sponge, an animal which has no consciousness due to a lack of centralized nervous system. But the poison in question is not seawater, it's cold hard booze. It's not confirmed she was taking it though, and the reason why House thinks she was is because of an abnormal heart rhythm and continued temperature rise despite filtering her blood from the antidepressant. House therefore wants to give IV alcohol to stop her withdrawing which we haven't used for 20 to 30 years. Instead, we use drugs similar to Valium as they activate the same receptors that chill you out called GABAergic receptors. House's treatment so far following the depression line of reasoning seem to not have been the most effective though. So what else could be going on? Well, we know that she's had swinging fever, fluctuating consciousness, depression, and a heart arrhythmia. We also know that she was unwell before the building fell on her, but that made everything massively worse. Metabolic could be something like Wilson's disease, infectious could be HIV if she wasn't happy with her husband. Maybe she was finding happy beginnings elsewhere. Degenerative could be an atypical Parkinson's syndrome like multiple systems atrophy or neoplastic could be interesting as well as all of her symptoms could fit with recent rises in her thyroid hormones and some cancers can cause that by increasing the levels of a hormone called HCG as well. In females, the most likely cause of that is a malignant growth of the placenta or the liver. Ironically, alcohol can be a cause and a treatment as well. If it's the medicine and the story so perfectly, that has to be my second diagnostic guess. Inflammatory could be lupus, as we mentioned, or vasculitis potentially. The last part of the acronym MIDNIT is trauma, but I mean, this would be pretty boring if it was just because the building fell on her, so we'll skip that part. Now, if you think this channel is an explosion of knowledge, then check out my channel membership. You get early access to new videos access to exclusive polls and to suggest a series and episode for me to react to. First 30 members get a chance to win a one hour one-on-one -on -one tutor session with me on a topic of your choice. We currently have 28 members with just two spots left. So press join now to get your spot. I'll keep working tirelessly to make it worth your while. I'll say adios. Are you erasing my TiVo? Fever's down, sweating is abated, heart's working fine. She's doing this thing with her mouth again. I think she's screaming. Amylase and lipase are through the roof. She has pancreatitis. You need a team. You ever tighten a guitar string really, really slowly? It makes this weird sound. 
almost like a scream. There's increased T2 signal in her hepatic capsule. My patient's about to start bleeding out of her mouth and anus. Whoa, 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 that escalated quickly. House is brilliant in terms of accuracy and the team made great efforts to get it right, which is why I've reacted to 82 episodes and I'm still going. But this is one thing that they keep getting wrong. You see, the MRI showed a kind of mass in the liver, but now she's starting to bleed from every orifice. The bleeding is a symptom of liver failure, which is unlikely to be caused by a solid mass in that area. Maybe there's something else going on still and I'm jumping to conclusions, who knows. Either way, if you get bleed due to liver failure, they usually aren't just a small pool of bright red blood like you saw there. It's black offensive. And if I remember correctly, there's something else in the bowel which comes as a twin package. The kind of thing you want to take back to the store, but so disgusted by it that you skip the refund and throw it straight in the bin. It's called Melina and every healthcare professional remembers the first time that they were greeted by its pungent embrace. If you're eating, then I apologize, but reality is reality so don't shoot the messenger either way it seems like my second diagnostic guess is getting more likely she's got warfarin after hip surgery you won't look at vaginas there are websites for that the guy made of money enlarged uterus it means she was recently pregnant scraping in the uterus indicates that she had an abortion and nothing in her medical history it's not the abortion it's what she did after you would not notice the pill she's on the pill if they'd known she was on it, they wouldn't have given her blood thinner after her hip surgery. Combination caused the bleeding. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. This episode is seriously off in accuracy. Firstly, this lady can't even get the strength to scream. And House is saying she's having warfarin, which is a tablet. Then he's also saying that her pill, which she also isn't taking since nobody knew she was having it. And something tells me that she's not in the mood at the moment, stayed in her body for all this time while she's been in hospital. Even the longest lasting contraceptive pill is out of your system by around one and a half days. Then even if that were true, it isn't just a pill that interacts with warfarin, it's a ton of things, broccoli, lettuce, liver, egg yolk, avocado, and even olive oil can change how it's metabolized. That's why when patients are being established on warfarin to begin with, like this patient, we would be doing their blood tests every day to make sure the levels aren't going too high. That means they would have picked up on the over thin blood, before it started waving at them. So yes, house, you do need a team. Thankfully though, thinning blood nowadays is much simpler due to newer meds that don't need the same monitoring. They're called direct oral anticoagulants or DOACs for short. And examples are things like apixaban and rivaroxaban. They're making patients and our lives much easier. This poor partner thought he was trying for a baby with his girlfriend and she was out having abortions and taking the pill. Brutal. Don't make it, I'm glad she's gonna be okay. Come on, let's go. Does Dr. Wilson know you're here? You put her on tamoxifen? Does it also block breathing and kidney function? She's crashing. Anybody here a doctor? I know you because Dr. Cuddy issued a memo. I just care about people. Acute respiratory distress syndrome. Crush syndrome. What was the problem with ARDS? Only explain the breathing. And the crush syndrome. It didn't explain the breathing. How's this going to A&E to pick up any doctor in the hospital to run a differential with? How's, I know I'm 20 years too late, but in case you want someone to run a differential with in your next series, you know who to call. Now, House thinks the patient could have crush syndrome and ALDS, but how could that happen? Well, crush syndrome is where prolonged compression, like being under a building for six hours, can cause muscle breakdown and release of myoglobin and potassium. The kidneys then struggle to filter it and levels rise in the blood, affecting the heart. You would find high potassium in the blood though, which is a very hard thing to miss as it comes on essentially every blood panel and venous gas, which they'd be doing plenty if she was this unwell. What about ARDS and acute respiratory distress syndrome? That's when a chest injury like compression or rib fractures can lead to an inflammatory response in the lungs, which stops effective gas exchange through your breathing, but oxygen doesn't get into your tissues. Both have high mortality rates and would be difficult to treat separately, never mind together. So hopefully it's something else. Question for you smart people. We're missing them in this lonely episode. So if you could be treated by one of House's old team, Chase, Cameron, or Foreman, who would it be and why? Answers down below. Are you a fan of symmetry? Because your eyes are lopsided. And by eyes, I mean breasts. Send me your resume. This woman is dying. Never mind. She has a lump in her arm. Does that mean you're wrong? Well, no, after the biopsy. She's got growths all over the place. 
Your partner's dying. Oh wait, maybe she's not. There's a lump here. Do you think you could have checked that before referring her to the Grim Reaper? Well, my team could have, but he was too busy in the closet with his floor buffer. Oh, house. Also, it seems like he's trying to abuse anyone that could join his team as much as possible to either put them off to stop him getting hurt or make sure that they can tolerate his years of abuse. Unconventional, but we'd expect nothing else from house. This is getting spicy as we have another clue though, multiple growths. See, it could be these micro tumors caused all of her symptoms and went unnoticed. There are a few neurocutaneous syndromes that could cause that like neurofibromatosis type one, tuberous sclerosis or von Hippolinda, but I only have one diagnostic guess left. They did mention the involvement of the pancreas, liver and kidneys and less of the neurological symptoms like seizure that we would likely see with tuberous sclerosis or NF1. So my final diagnostic guess has to be von Hippolinda. We are locked in. The growths are eosinophilic granulomas. Where's my patient? You took a human being. They give him the wrong meds. Who the hell knows what's gonna happen? He's in room 318. Now she's allergic to something the chart says she's not allergic to. That's not her lying, that's the chart lying. What's going on here? What are you saying, this isn't Megan? Yes. Liz died yesterday, this isn't Liz. What's her name? Liz. Oh God! There you have it, a case of mistaken identity. That means Megan didn't lie to her boyfriend, but is no longer with us. Mistaken identities after birth can and have happened relatively frequently. One standout case was in Canada, 1975. Two sets of twins were from the same village and had been accidentally switched at birth and became friends with each other. It wasn't until they were in the late thirties that a lifetime of comments saying that they belonged in each other's families started to take root. They then ran the test and the genetic test came back showing that they were switched, causing the shock to set in. The hospital where it happened was run by the government at the time who promised to investigate, but there's been no update on the case so far as to why the mistaken identity happened. Devastating news, but Liz still needs a diagnosis. Girlfriend never lied to you. But Cameron would never have accepted that this guy knew nothing about the love of his life. Any one of them would have solved this days ago. Hire a team. By the end of six weeks, one of you will be gone, as will 28 more of you. This is not just any interview. This is a soul destroying, drag each other through the mud death match race to hell, a recipe for brilliant TV. Interesting episode for sure. Shame we never fully found out the diagnosis though. I guess it was just the antidepressant interactions, alcohol, warfarin, the pill and allergy all in one. Very interesting twist at the end though, even though it wasn't quite the big lupus explosion I was hoping for. Seven out of 10 entertainment, five out of 10 accuracy, two out of 10 diagnosis. This episode makes much more sense when you watch the season three finale where House loses his entire team hit.